Hello, everyone. Welcome to learning sports photography with uh, Christian Balgrad. Balgrad, sorry, that's a tough name for me. I'm uh, Antti Korhonen. I'm here with Canon and uh, to help you and uh, present to you this uh, great leading sports photographer, award-winning Canon ambassador, Christian Valgram. Uh, so today's uh, event will be hosted by Scandinavian Photo, who also has extremely good deals on sports photography gear this week. So what a great opportunity to learn from the best and also to go and get yourself some new stuff just for the Euro and football season coming up. So we'll be having a great presentation by Christian, and then we'll have a Q&A in the end. So if you have any questions, please use the Q&A uh, sender there, and we'll come to them later. If there's anything you want to holler in the, uh, during the presentation, just use the chat. We'll be there monitoring. So on my part, it, we're good to go. And uh, Christian, are you there? Hello, everybody. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Very warm welcome from my side. Thank you, Antti, for introducing me. Uh, as Antti told, you know me, I'm Christian Wagram, sports photographer from Austria. I'm based in Austria and I'm international working for GEPA Pictures, Austria's biggest sports pictures agency. Yeah, let me tell you a few things about myself, how I started my career. I started with photography when I was a kid, when I was a really small kid with nine, 10 years. I got my first SLR camera from my grandfather. And yeah, that was when I, that was when I started photography and it was really, really great fun. And I didn't, didn't get good pictures at that time, but I never stopped photography until the age of 16, 17, when I started to do some workshops, different workshops uh, in photography, but not in sports photography. After that, I went to Austrian army, joined the army. I thought it was a good idea, but it wasn't. After a few years, I quit. And then I started as a picture editor at the, at the picture desk at GEPA Pictures for, for almost two years. After that, I got the chance to turn on the other side to get a photographer. And since that, I'm traveling around the world, capturing the most uh, most important sports events like Olympic Games, uh, World Championships, European Championships uh, in football, uh, Champion League finals, motorsports as well, like Formula One or MotoGP. That's how I started my career and I'm really happy happy to do this job and I could not imagine to do anything else. What I really love in sports photography is that every day is completely different. There's no day like the other. You have always different challenges. It's, yeah, every day you have to, to find new nice angles, new nice spots. You have to handle different light situations. Uh, you have to, you have to try, I always try to capture the right moment. My, my main goal in sports photography is to show really special moments in sports, not just a simple action. I always try to capture really the right moment. I will show you a few pictures and we go through the pictures and I tell you something about this pictures just a second i share my screen now i hope everybody can see the screen this is one one of my my most famous pictures i think this is the picture i won the world sport uh, world press photo awards in the sports category in 2016. i shot this picture at the 2015 world championships in alpine skiing and yeah, I think in, I, I, did really, I did a really good job there because I have a real nice light situation with this backlight. The action is great. Of course, this action you cannot plan, but uh, you have to be at the, right, at the right time, at the right moment. And of course, if you're at the right time, at the right moment, you have to know what to do there. And that's why 
it is so important to know your gear. You should be able to use your gear while sleeping, as I always say. When you get to a venue, it's way too far to, to get used to your camera. You should, you should know where the buttons are. You should know where you, where, uh, where you have your lenses if you want to change your lenses quick. These things you can prepare. You can prepare yourself. And this is the most important thing in sports photography. Before you go out to the venue, do a sports event, or to shoot some, some sports, it's really important to be well prepared. Be sure the battery, your batteries are loaded. Uh, be sure you have enough memory cards with you. Have your lenses you, with you. Uh, and yeah, try to be ready, as ready as possible. Of course, you cannot plan everything, especially in sports photography. But the most important thing is to have something in mind, to have a picture in mind. With this picture, I had, of course, I did not have, did not have the, the, the crash in mind, but uh, I had a picture with backlight in mind. For that, I skied down this slope, I think three or four times to find the right spot. And I was in the spot almost one and a half hours before uh, before the race started, and the spot was completely in the shadow. So I was hoping, I was hoping for the sun, and the sun got up. I think five minutes before the before the race started, and there I knew, okay, everything is good, and I did a good job. And uh, not just this picture from this race were good. Also, the other pictures were nice actually just this is special because of the crash. Luckily, luckily, Andre Bank got well soon and he skipped this race course, I think, a year later again. Next picture. I think most of you will know some kind of these pictures. It's Josian Bolt at the Olympics in uh, Rio 2016. Here you can see how close win and lose, winning and losing, losing is is together. Some photographers, good friends of mine, were on the other side at this at this race, and uh, I had at the same moment the same idea. The only thing that they did different, they did nothing different, but Yusian Bolt did something different because he had a big smile when he turned his, his head to the other side. So I would say this is a nice shot, but not the perfect shot. The perfect shot was from the other side. So it's not always just winning. You are not always on the right position, but uh, you can do good shots from nearly everywhere. I always try to, to have uh, my shots in mind before. I do not go out and, and wait what is happening. I try to plan as much as possible. For this race, I, I plan to do something different, not uh, the, the standard 100 meter shot from the finish line with a short shutter speed. I wanted to show the speed in this race. And uh, that's why I used the shutter, shutter speed, a, sh a long shutter speed. I think it was between 150, uh, one fifties uh, for five tenths of a second or six tenths of a second, something like, like that. But on this day, other guys were, were more lucky than me and they had the perfect shot. And uh, one colleague, good friend of mine, did win the World Press Photo Award with this picture a year after, my, after me. So as I told you, it's, it's really important important to have your gear ready and be familiar with your gear. Uh, let me tell you something about my gear, uh, about my favorite gear. Actually, I'm using the Canon 1DX Mark III and the Con Canon R5 together with a lens range, lens range from 14 millimeters up to 600 millimeters. And sometimes, especially in winter, uh, I also use the 800 millimeters. As we have a football tournament starting tomorrow, uh, and I'm going there tomorrow morning, uh, let me tell you something about my favorite football gear. For a football match, for a typical football match, 
doesn't matter if it is a Champions League match, European Championships or a third league match in Austria. Uh, I have minimum three buddies with me. Uh, on the main body, I use the 200 to 400 millimeters. I love this lens for football because you're so flexible. You can capture nearly everything. You can add the converter with a, with a simple, simply. So this is my, my, my main lens. Additional on the second body, I use a 24 to 70 millimeters or a 24 to 105 millimeters to capture close action or close emotion shots. If it is happening, if it's happening close to me. On the third body, I normally have a wide angle lens, 24, 24 millimeters, something like that. And this is the camera I'm using as a, as a behind the goal camera, as a net can a remote camera. And that's my, my main gear for a football match, of course. Of course, I'm, I have a 7200 with me, I have a wide angle lens with me. And I always have some some nice lenses like a 50 or 85 with me to to create some special special shots. In sports photography, for me, it's really important to be focused on the sports and try to understand the sports. If you don't know, if you don't know the sports, it will be nearly impossible to get some nice frames of the sports. I get the best pictures in, in those sports I do myself or I did myself or in those sports I love to watch. It's easier to anticipate what is happening if you know the sport uh, or if you did your sports, did the sports yourself before. This is the, the perfect thing. Perfect thing is if you did it, did it yourself or if you do it yourself, not on a professional level maybe, but yeah. It's really, really necessary to understand what is going on and what is happening. If you understand the sports and if you're focused on the sports and if you are well prepared, uh, it's possible to get some nice frames. And for me, it's really important to, to, capture, to capture the right moment. I'll share my screen again, just a second. As I told you, for me, it's important to, sh to show the right moment in action. In this picture, it was a, a basketball tournament. Uh, two weeks ago here in Austria, it was an Olympic qualifying tournament. Uh, it was the match France against uh, Japan. And Japan was fighting for a ticket for the Olympic Games at Tokyo for the home Olympics against France. France won the match, and this was the picture. Uh, I would say I can tell the story with this picture. The Japanese girl on the right is struggling, and France is above her. And France won the game, and so France qualified for the for the Olympic Games. And Japan had to play another match. Luckily, they qualified too, so they they can they can. Uh, participate at their home tournament in three against three basketball. Here you can see uh, another picture of a sport I really love. I do not play golf myself, but I love to shoot golf because in golf you have so much time to create nice, nice frames. You you can can walk the nature. Uh, golf courses are really beautiful in normally, and here it is it is really really good to have nice nice gear this picture was taken with the r5 with the r5 with the with the electronic shutter you have the possibility to shoot silent and that's a big advance in in golf so you do not disturb the players and you can capture with the uh, the capture the right moment with the Right after hitting the ball, the ball is still in the picture. Uh, and with the 20 frames per second, it's it's really fun to shoot. 
Here's a picture of the third league Austrian football. As you can see, as not just in Champions League, you can capture great moments. You can capture great uh, action shots in third league football as well. It's not just in Champions League possible. And I do not make any any difference if I uh, if I go to third league football or if I go to European Championships or to Champions League finals. It's always the same sports, and you can create good pictures at third league matches as well. Here is was a, a picture. This was taken at the match it was the last last round in the Austrian third league, and uh, the guys in red were fighting for the for for getting up the league and the goalkeeper in this match managed managed to keep his goal safe and so the goalkeeper's team was winning this match here you can ski you can see as i would say right moment again alpine skiing is of course one of my favorite sports it was I was a pretty good skier myself, and I love this sport. So I love to be on skis. I love to be on skis as much as possible, and that's why I love to shoot ski alpine ski racing. In alpine ski racing, it's sometimes really hard to find to find great photo positions because of the safety regulations of FIS. Sometimes you have to be really really far away that's why i'm using real long lenses in alpine skiing 600 millimeters up to 800 millimeters sometimes with converter this was shot with a 600 together with a 1.4 converter please don't ask me which 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 focal length is this but it's 600 multiplicated with 1.4 so it's easy to uh uh, and the most important thing in alpine skiing is to to get familiar with the course. I always be in the race. I'm always one of the first three in the race course to have enough time to ski the to ski down the course and and try to anticipate which line the skiers will use. And this picture was not a bad job, I would say. Uh, both skis are in the air. He's hitting the gate really hard. Uh, luckily, he won this race, so it was a nice shot, and I'm really happy with. In sports photography, as I do, I'm not just shooting action shots. Sometimes I'm shooting portrait shots, or yeah, more or less portrait shots with with famous Austrian athletes. This is one of of uh, most famous Austrian. Heptathlon athletes. She's qualified for the Olympics, and hopefully she's she gets a chance to make a medal there. And this autumn, I got the chance to to shoot her while a training session. And there, I found this spot with this nice framing of the hurls. Her with a with a, right before the start, focused and looking directly in my direction. I love this picture because of this nice framing of the hurdles. And this is what this is the thing I always try to do. I always try to find some different angles, different views. I always try to show pictures a spectator never will see. For a spectator, it's impossible to get the view on the athlete like this. So this is what I want to show. The same here. This is a picture from the Austrian Grand Prix. Uh, at the race course not far from my hometown. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah, the, the race course itself is not that spectacular. And I was searching for a spot where I can show that the race takes part, uh, takes place in Austria. I wanted to create an image which is typically for this race course. And yeah, luckily, uh, after walking around, the, the race course a few times I found this spot, I found this angle from backwards, shot with 800 millimeters, I think, or the 600 with 1.4, I cannot remember. Uh, and maybe, as you know, red, white and red is the Austrian flag, so I, I 
I could manage to create a typical a typical shot for the for the race in Austria. Now it is now it is everybody is doing doing this kind of shots at the Austrian races. Doesn't matter if it's Formula One or if it's uh, some other race racing series. But luckily, I was the first who who could manage to create this picture on this race course. As I mentioned before, I'm not just using the cameras with me. I'm always using uh, cameras, remote cameras, as here with the discus throw is another Austrian athlete who's qualified for the Olympics. Uh, he has really good chances for the for the for the for the medals in, in Tokyo. And this was a few weeks ago. I met with him, and yeah, we tried some different settings, setting up a remote camera. And yeah, this angle is again an angle I a spectator never will see. And that's my, my main goal to create a picture. This was more or less a, a test shooting for the Olympics to find a good angle for, for remote cameras for discus throw. As I mentioned before, preparation is everything in, in sports photography. For example, we have uh, horse riding at the Olympics and an Austrian horse riding team qualified for the Olympics and I'm not really familiar to horse riding and yeah that's why I last weekend uh, two weeks ago I think it was yeah I went to horse riding really low level horse riding just to shoot and get familiar with the sports I'm really I'm doing sports photography for almost 13 years now as a professional, but I'm not familiar with every sports and I still try to prepare myself and get get familiar with the sports. That way, that's why I went two days for to a real low level horse riding competition to get familiar with the sports, to try to find some different angles, to talk to the athletes. So I hope I can I can anticipate a little bit more at the at the Olympics this year. Okay, so it's not just about, about action and tight action. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, in sports photography, every day is a different day and you cannot plan everything. Uh, you cannot plan the light, but you have, you, can, you have the chance to play with the light. I always try to, I always say, there is no bad light situation. You can produce nice pictures with every light situation. In this case, it's perfect light condition for a, for a sports photographer. It's a, a hard enduro event in Austria. You see on the right side of the picture, everything is in the shadow of the racer uh, with the dust in the back is in the bright sunshine. So it was really easy to create a nice image there. This is a backlight image. As I mentioned before, there's no bad light you will always find a way a way to create nice images and i love to shoot with backlight same again it was a cycling race i think it was um, austrian championships or something like that and i didn't find a nice spot the sun was yeah was hide was hidden behind clouds and yeah I didn't I didn't find a nice a nice spot to shoot and suddenly the sun went out and yeah I was on this spot and it was not really spectacular it was just flat and straight so I tried to do some different and yeah did some backyard shots here again you can do you can play with lights in the alpine skiing it's backlight again with the shadows of the trees in the upper section of the pictures. The skier is skiing around the gates. The, the spreading snow is in the sunshine. So you can create nice pictures with this kind of, of, of light as well. One of my most favorite techniques in sports photography is, is do some panning shots. For panning shots, it's necessary to be, to be yeah, in some kind of a good shape 
and it's it's really important to understand the sports and it's really important to anticipate otherwise you will not have any chance to follow the follow the object and it's it's really necessary to be completely focused if you're not focused on the sports and and on the move on the movement of the sports on the moving direction of the of the athlete or racing car or whatever you will not get decent panning shots this shot was taken from far behind with a long lens i think it was the 200 and 400 at around 300 millimeters uh, with a shutter speed of eight tenths of a second or something like that yeah and it was the world championships last year here in two years ago in 2019 in seefeld where I was ahead of a photography team and, and I had the chance to play around. I didn't need any shots, any, any shots, any safe shots. And I had the chance to play the whole day. So I was playing with some panning and tried to show the motion and the speed of a ski jumper in this case. Here the sign, a uh, real long shutter speed. Uh, it was, I think, a tenth of a second. It was uh, a trampoline jumping competition at the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires in 2016. It was our only Austrian, only Austrian athlete. I just had to shoot the Austrians and I already had some, some decent shots of him. So I tried to do some different. I went around the venue and tried to create something different pictures and I never saw a I never saw a, a, a picture, a panning picture of trampoline jump before. So I tried this, tried to find a decent spot with the nice colors, the, the, the blue and the dark and the white in the background and tried to compose some, some picture like this. Here's the panning shot again. I wanted to show the speed of, of the, the cycling, the track cycling. And yeah, everybody was on the same spot at this race and I didn't want to do the same pictures as everybody. So I went right in the middle of this velodrome and did some panning. It was three tenths of a second or something like that. And I could manage to capture the Austrian athlete nearly perfect. The Austrian athlete is in the middle. Unfortunately, he didn't win the race, but for Austrian clients, it was good to have a shot like this. In sports, it's not just about action and motion and and speed and, and showing special moments. Emotion is one of the most important parts in, in, in sports photography. It doesn't matter if it is a positive or negative emotion. I always try to, to, to show the emotions. Here it was at the Olympics 2012 in London. She was, she was winning the race. She's completely happy celebrating, celebrating her victory. And in the background, you see the third and second uh, racer. They're sitting on the ground and they're, yeah, some kind of disappointed. And yeah, I could manage to, to show the emotion of after the race. And this is, this is what I want to show. I want to show the emotion in sports as well. Here's another picture from football. It's uh, European League. It's our Austrian team uh, from Salzburg. This was uh, a picture taken with a wide angle lens. As I told you before, in football, I always have a wide angle lens with me for cases like this. They were celebrating the goal straight in, straight in front of me. It was uh, the goal they scored to qualify for the I think semi-finals. Yes, it was the semi-finals and they were celebrating. It was a big victory for Austria. It's not normal in Austrian football to qualify for a semi-final on European level. So it was a really, really nice shot. But unfortunately, on this, uh, at, at this second, I broke my long lens. So <laughs> I don't know why some photographer next to me kicked my lens away. So I I had, I had a broken lens, but a nice frame. And it's not just about the sportsman. 
I always try to keep my eyes open for things going on around the field of play. Fans are celebrating victories. Fans are cheering for the teams. As you see on the picture, fans are wearing contact lenses in the colors of the country. Here, the Swedish fans was a completely crazy guy. It was at the European Championships in France 2016. He was celebrating, he was cheering for his team. And I always, always try to be focused on sports, of course, but I always try to keep my eyes open for things are going on around the field of play. If it can be, can be fans celebrating, can be coaches, uh celebrating or or coaching try coaches trying to coach their team and and give tips to their team and so i always try to 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 show the things going going on around as well Just this. so now the, now i told you something about my point of view i showed you some pictures Nowadays in sports photography, it's not just taking pictures as important as taking pictures nowadays is to, to have your pictures at the client at the moment. So that's why I'm using not just cameras, I'm using them with their, with their Wi-Fi connection possibilities. Now I'm using with the X3, um, I'm using the, the wireless file transmitter. Uh, and with the R5, I'm using the built-in wireless file transmission possibility. So, uh, just a sec, ah, yeah, wireless file transmission. It's really important to be with the pictures at your client as, as soon as possible. For example, in, in, in football, uh, I have the first pictures at my clients, I think 10, mi 10 minutes after kickoff latest. At Alpine Skiing, we have the pictures at our clients before they are crossing the finish line. So last year at the Kidsville race, we were five photographer photographers on the race course. And we had the first pictures available for our clients worldwide uh, before the race uh, crossed the finish line. We're we have our editors sit, sitting at our at our office and they are doing the editing for 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 us luckily and yeah we can focus on on photography just just think if i forgot something yes of course i forgot something Luckily, I'm in a position now where I can take some risk as well. Sometimes it's you have I have jobs where I have to have to do decent shots, and most of the time I have the possibility to take some risk. Uh, as as I showed you before in the pictures, the the cycling picture. I share my screen again. This picture, I had the possibility to play around. I did not need any decent shots of this racer because I had enough from the days before. And so I decided to just to play with shutter speeds. I did, yeah, shutter speeds from one second up to, yeah, five, six, eight tenths of a second. And yeah, I, I would say it's, 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 really really good if you get the chance to play around with shutter speeds to take some risk not always uh, do not always take the, the the safe shot take some risk and try something different this is this is what i, I always try to do uh, of course i have to deliver decent shots but i always try to to do some different shots to do to play with different shutter speeds or different angles as i showed you before So this is this is my point of view. This are this 
is 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 my point of view of sports photography of photography of course it's a busy job but i love my job it's this year i'm traveling i'm traveling a lot uh, last year it was not that busy because of this coronavirus but the year before i spent i think it was 170 nights at, nights at the hotel room it's not always fun to stay just at hotel rooms and it's not always just sunshine for example i was in barcelona for five or six or six times now but i do not know the city i just know the the race course there the the formula one course and the, the football stadium i didn't see anything else of the city sometimes it's fly in fly out just for a job but i could not imagine to do something different i love this job and yeah i love to do it and i i hope i can do it as long as possible this was it from my side. May I hand over to Antti again? Yes. Antti is back. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you very much. It was uh, extremely inspiring and uh, in many ways eye-opening eye to, to look behind the scenes and hear from the behind the scenes of sports photography. Extremely thankful for being able to join. And of course, now we have a uh, Q and A. There are a couple of very nice questions that have aroused during the uh, the presentation. So first off, do you ever crop your pictures? Yes, of course I do crop my pictures. I try to crop them as as less as possible. But in sports photography, you have not always the chance to, to have a full frame picture. You're far away sometimes. You cannot plan where exactly the action is going on. I uh, am using long lenses, of course, but it's not possible possible to to shoot without cropping. But I try to I, I try to do a minimum of cropping. Thank you. Uh, next question would be: Are you sending every picture wirelessly to your editors, or just a select few? No, I do a, I do a selection before. And uh, I, I'm using the set button to upload the pictures. So I go quickly through my images and send a couple of frames, not everything. This would be too much for, for the editor and too much for the for the connection. Great, thank you. Uh, next up, any pointers on how to become a paid, a paid photographer sharing pictures or Instagram and social media, etc. Besides keeping keep working on your craft, of course. I might read that again if you want to. Uh, basically, any points on pointers on how to become a paid photographer, sharing pictures or Instagram and social media, etc. Or besides keeping work on your craft, of course. Of course, you have to work on your craft. This is the, the most important thing. But nowadays with the social media, Instagram, Facebook, don't know what else you have a, go, a great possibility to show your pictures a great community a lot of people and the most important thing is to go out and shoot 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 and create create new pictures never never keep going keep going show your pictures take the chance to show your pictures to editors to agencies wherever you get the chance show your pictures Share them on social media and you will get the chance. Thank you. That's great what questions. I did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, great questions, by the way, uh, for, for everyone who has uh, uh, sent them out. It's, it's very interesting stuff. Uh, next up is uh, what is your best tip for someone who is new at sports photography? For someone who's new at sports photography, first thing is get familiar with your gear this is the most important thing if you're at the sports shooting it's too late to to think about settings of a camera or something like that there you should be really familiar and you should be able to use your camera gear while sleeping and then yeah how to get a sports photographer if you're new in sports photography go out and shoot 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 it doesn't matter if it's the third league football or champions league it's the same sports Go out and try yourself. Try to improve your skills. Watch pictures of 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 sports photo of other sports photographers. Talk to other sports photographers. If you go to shoot to to sports photograph uh, to sports events, you will meet some other photographers. 
maybe some experienced photographers and all sports photographers are some kind of family and they share their experiences and there you can learn really a lot. Good, good to know. So you can just boldly go and ask for tips yeah. you can, from the guys on the field. Great. Uh, another great question, of course. Do you deliver? Uh, sorry, do you deliver any video material on your assignments as well? No, I do not. In most cases, I'm not allowed to because of the right situations, the rights holders who have the rights for removing images, and. In my opinion, it's not really possible to deliver good video material com combined with good photo material. You should focus on one on one side. Great. How do you feel about switching between 1DX and R5? I have the same set, but feel that I have, have more problems with focus on R5. I often end up with, uh, with about the same setting on R5 as 1DX, and I don't take advantage of the advantage, uh, advanced focus possibilities. I do not have any troubles with changing from R5 to, to 1DX, uh, but I have to say real long lenses I prefer to use with the 1DX and uh, the shorter lenses I prefer to use with the, with the R5. And yeah, the, as, as mentioned, the R5 autofocus possibilities are really, really great. I love them. The I autofocus is, it's, yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable great. A few weeks ago, I was shooting table tennis in Austria. And it was really dark, really dark there. I was shooting at the ISO of, I think, 6,400 with the I autofocus and the small little white ball flying really fast. but. Uh, the R5 managed to to stay to stay with the focus straight at the high, and I was I was really impressed. It's, I couldn't believe it before. And and switching be, between these these both cameras, yeah, from the beginning on, I did not have any troubles. It was yeah, the, the R5 when I got it last year, it was yeah like I had it yeah for years, <laughs> so it was easy for me. In my uh, opinion, that often happens with Canon camera systems since they are very familiar with the uh, layout and the menu and everything. So it's easy to go from one model to another. Uh, of course, I'm very biased here. <laughs> That's the great thing with Canon cameras. You get a new camera and you do not need to go through the whole manual to, to go out and shoot. You turn it on and you are familiar with it. The, the menu is, is the same as, as before. And uh, yeah, it's, I love this. Thank you. Uh, that's it for now on the Q&A uh, set. There's, there's no other questions from, from the participant at the moment. We can wait for a moment if someone has uh, something else has uh, come up. Uh, I'm personally interested in uh, hearing if you have your, uh, what type of uh, a button layout you use when shooting sports photography, as in, uh, do you customize your button, button settings or like some tips and tricks there maybe which might help or is it just a default that you use? No, I'm, I'm using the default button settings. I love them, they're really great. Just in, in some cases, I'm, I'm using the, the focus on the back, but normally uh, I use the focus on the shutter button. Nice so the, the, the setting, no, the button setting is standard, yeah. yeah okay, okay. It's uh, it often as a, as a, no, no, a not, not really, ah. not really, not really. Okay. On the, on the, uh, how is the button called on the back side? The, with the, with the star? Yes. Like uh, there, there I have the, a, a second layer, a second setting on this button. When I press this button, I have I can do a panning shot in the second. So okay. I have a standard setting on the on the main buttons, and if I press this button, I have a, a panning shot with one tenth, uh, one twentieth of a second. That's of course a nice trick for, for yeah. everyone. Yeah, especially your panning shots were very impressive. I must say. Yeah. It, uh, I love to do banning shots and luckily, luckily I get the chance to, to find some time to play around because you do not go to a sports event and set your camera off on, on three thirds of a second and you have a decent shot in the moment. You have to try it and, and do some more frames. Yeah, it was a very 
very impress impressive uh, set. We have another question here on the from the uh, participants here. So any tips or tricks to hit the focus on the photos with these high speed sports? Tips and tricks, yeah, the, the Canon autofocus is working pretty, pretty good. Uh, to get decent sharp pictures, you have to be focused yourself, be focused on the sports. Uh, try to, to, to catch the, the, the object and anything else is done by the autofocus. As a, as a camera geek, I might want to ask within the same question that uh, do you, which autofocus uh, system do you use? Is it uh, focus in the middle or maybe something wider? I, I'm using something wider. On the R5, I love to use the, the, the eye autofocus. <laughs> it's working so good. I do not That's need anything else there. <laughs> <laughs> and on the X3, I, I use this field with the nine, with the nine autofocus dots. And it's working, working so good. I tried it at MotoGP last year. We had bright sunshine, and this was a long straight. They were coming in my direction. I was shooting with the 1DX Mark III. It was 600 millimeters plus the 1.4 converter, and I just did the autofocus test. And I had, uh, I think, 55 shots, and I think 53 of them were pretty sharp. Good to know. So it's uh, rely on the autofocus. That is yeah. one, one good trip, uh, uh, tip. And another question. I am using the 7D Mark II. Any tips what camera should I buy next time? Any tips what you should buy next time? Yeah, it's hard to say. Depends on the budget on the first, on, on the first thing. Uh, R5 is a great camera. I can recommend the R5 for nearly everybody. Uh, you, it's, yeah, a great camera. One DX Mark III is a great camera, and I think there's something new coming in autumn. That is, has been promised. Yeah. It has, has been a very interesting news from Canon related to this, especially probably post-sports photography seems to be in mind there. Um, R5, have you, by the way, tried the R6? I never tried the R6, no. In that but case, I of course, depending on the budget some... and if there is much yeah. need for crop, then the R6 does autofocus very much the same way, exactly the same way as uh, R5. So there is also a very good option for, for someone looking for less megapixels, maybe. It could be a good option, of course, yeah. Now, uh... now that the mirrorless system of Canon is, is pretty good, so with the R5, R6, it's really nice. Yes, it's, uh, it seems to be growing. Yeah. Every time you, I open the Canon page, there seems to be new stuff. So it is uh, growing it's so quite, a, quite a hectic ride at the moment <laughs> for the R series, especially lenses. I think all the time. So great, great news from Canon all, all, all together. So at the moment, we don't have any more questions. So um, I think maybe is it time to say goodbye or, or is there any? Any more coming? If there's some more coming. Oh, let's give it a, some final words. And if there are any late uh, comers, then of course we'll have them in the in the uh, slide show as well. But I'm safe to say, I guess, that uh, I'm not the only one feeling like I should go uh, spend a little bit of time uh, next to a football pitch or something uh, during this weekend. It was so inspiring to uh, see and hear your thoughts and uh, tricks on the sports photography. So I'm really uh, excited to get to try out some gear with uh, maybe some panning shots or, or, or some, but uh, very good information from your end. I really want to thank you, Christian, for, for giving this uh, opportunity for, for us all. There are very, very many uh, thanks going on in the chat. So I guess we are uh, good to Good to start uh, going and let you uh, pack up for your for your trip coming up. And, uh, yes, hopefully for a long yeah, we'll, I, I will, I'm sure we'll all try to spot you on the uh, on the side of the pitch when we uh, look at the, look at the games. Hopefully, the, my way goes until the final at the Wembley Stadium. Oh, great! <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It depends on the Austrian team. I have to follow the Austrian team for the tournament, so. 
well, let's hope for a I'm more or less final then. of the team. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So uh, I would like to thank from uh, from Canon and Scandinavian Photo side also everyone who has participated. Uh, it was it was a very a big pleasure and a privilege to be here with you guys. I hope we gave some uh, some sort of a ride here that will, you will benefit from in in your future shots. So. Good night all and uh, have a have a nice sports photography. <laughs> it was a great pleasure for me too. Thank you. All the best and go out and shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs>